Ah, that is good fine wine. Uh, okay, it's Apple Juice YouTube, don't worry. Either way, for those who are a little bit confused right now, you'll see why I did that a little while later. Either way, welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, EVGA goes AMD. Your old GPU is aged like fine wine. Intel is killing performance on your CPU. AMD just made the fastest phone ever yet. That's a phone, and Intel's monster GPU is officially coming soon. But first, as of now, only 34% of those who watch my videos are subscribed. And that means over 60% of you aren't. So what are you waiting for? If you love staying up to date with all things gaming hardware, make sure to subscribe, as well as check out the GamerMail Discord server and follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, as you can see, we have a tweet here from EVGA, who tweeted, A new darkness is coming, along with a YouTube video. And when we go to that YouTube video, let me start it over, you can see it's only 9 seconds long. Dark. Cloud. Smoke. Ah. Ryzen. Okay. So for those who don't know, EVGA has been making motherboards for a little while now, they're fairly new to it, but they've solely been focused on Intel. And this new trailer shows that they're going to be moving their dark motherboards over to AMD's Ryzen CPUs. And really, I think that that shows us just how well AMD is doing with their CPUs. When EVGA originally launched their motherboards, going Intel only showed that they really thought Intel was the absolute dominant force in the CPU market. But with them essentially conceding and moving over to AMD as well, it definitely shows just how much AMD has made up ground in this market with their Ryzen CPUs. That one is definitely interesting, but we have something even more interesting with this next story from 3dcenter.org. And really quickly, I will go ahead and say yes, it is a little old at this point, but pretty much no one's been talking about it, and I think it's really interesting. Basically, this goes back to that whole fine wine kind of thing that I did at the beginning. And for those who don't really understand what I'm talking about when I say that, it's this idea that over time, certain GPUs actually get better with new drivers and game updates and things like that. See, when everyone kind of goes to purchase a GPU, it's usually not when GPUs are first launched. But when the reviews happen, they are typically done right at the first part of the launch. And that is understandable just because by the time that we're say halfway done or especially towards the end of the life cycle of the GPU, everyone's talking about the next generation of GPUs. So very few YouTubers or news organizations, things like that, are going to want to do benchmarks on such older GPUs when we're really just excited about the new ones. Well, this right here, I think, shows just how important it really is to do. When we go down here, this gives a really good look at kind of the overall ones for the 6800 XT and 6900 XT versus the 3090 and 3080. As you can see here, we have 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. When we move down here, you can see that at least according to them, that the 3080 is beating the 6800 XT in all metrics, 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. When we move down to June, things take a pretty sharp turn. Not only does AMD 6800 XT begin catching up to the 3080, but it actually completely turns it around for 1080p and 1440p. Now, it's still losing in 4K, but by much less than it was back in December 2020. And then when we move down to the 6900 XT, we see something fairly similar. Now, it, it does not catch up to performance in 1440p, but it absolutely catches up and then wins at 1080p, though of course you could argue if you have a 6900 XT or 3090, you probably aren't going to be doing a lot of 1080p gaming, but this is really still important. Now once again, it did make up a little bit of ground um, with 4K, though not all that much. Now we can move up here, we can see similar results also for the 6800, and actually when it was versing the 3070, you can see that it was originally beating it back in December, but now it's completely dominating it. We're talking 9%, 10.7%, and at 4K, 11.1%. Now, when we move down here, this actually gives us an interesting view of just 
seeing how much each individual went up in performance and then overall averaging them. So when we look at the average of NVIDIA, we can see that their GPUs actually did get better performance over time with new drivers, you know, new game updates, things like that. But AMD just simply did so much better. So we're talking 10.1% at 1080p versus 2.9%, 8.5% at 1440p versus 3.3, and 5.2 versus 1.8. So basically, I think this gives you a really good idea of just how important it is to look at some of the newest reviews when you go to purchase a GPU. And I think that this is especially important now just because when these GPUs originally came out, basically no one could buy them. Quick shout out to the paper launch t-shirt at store.gamermel.com. Anyway, don't forget this when you go to purchase a new GPU. And next up for today, Intel has apparently disabled TSX for even more CPUs in a new microcode update. For those who don't know, Intel's Transactional Synchronous Extension, or TSX, basically adds hardware-based transactional memory to their CPUs. And it's been known since uh, June 2018, Intel released a white paper that suggests that there are some security flaws in their TSX, and they even released a microcode update back in October of 2018. But the issue is that when it was originally released, it didn't disable TSX by default. Well, now in this newest update, according to 4Onyx, it does. And it does this for Intel's 6th, 7th, and 8th gen CPUs. Now, you might be thinking that this really doesn't affect you, and for the most part it doesn't, but the one area that does seem to be massively affected by disabling TSX is emulation. So, if you're someone who likes to use emulation, basically, when you install this microcode update, it could seriously affect those games. So yeah, this is basically just a serious screw up by Intel. They added TSX, supposed to be a pretty decent feature. They seem to kind of neglect it for a little while, and now they're essentially disabling it all together. And next up for today, we have a really interesting story as a new benchmark was uh, just found with AMD's upcoming RDNA 2 based GPU in Samsung's Exynos processor. So this is an iGPU essentially made for phones. And what's really interesting about this is the fact that when we look at the score, and remember that this could be a fairly early score so it could get even better, but when we look at this score, it got an overall score of 8,134, and that ends up beating everything, every phone that is. When we look at tablets, and especially uh, Apple's new M1, it obviously doesn't compete, but this is almost certainly going to be in phones, and even compared to Apple's iPhone 12, you can see it crushes every one, let me bring it up bigger. You can see it crushes every single one of these. So pretty interesting there. We've been hearing about something from AMD coming using their RDNA 2 because we do know that uh, a little while back, AMD partnered up with Samsung to do just this. And I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed. And lastly for today, if you followed the channel, you know that uh, Intel released this slide during one of their recent presentations, and it essentially confirms that DG2, which is AMD's HE HPG GPU, their monster GPU, we're talking the 512 EU discrete graphics card made for gaming, gonna have ray tracing, all of that good stuff, the stuff that we've really been waiting for, is sampling. So it is going out to OEM partners to test and try out. We'll probably start seeing some benchmarks pretty soon. And that obviously means that they are likely coming to gamers pretty soon. And actually, they're coming significantly sooner with this last story. You can see right here, Intel Graphics tweeted out, do you still have your special event? Join the Odyssey cards. For those who don't know, Join the Odyssey was really when Intel originally announced their XE graphics cards and were clearly going to be releasing to the gaming market as powerful discrete graphics cards. Well, those who did join, they're letting you know that now's the time to use it. Fill in the details on your form here and get some swag or at least some swag maybe coming your way.
And when we go to the page that it links, we can see that it says, quote, We are soon heading toward a milestone moment, the pending release of the XE HPG microarchitecture from Intel. Basically, this pretty much 100% confirms that Intel's upcoming GPUs are coming, well, really soon. So that's great news for anyone who's really been waiting for a third GPU maker to finally get in the mix. And it's definitely great just because even now it's still pretty hard to get new GPUs. So with Intel being a third GPU maker coming to the market, hopefully gamers will finally get a chance to buy a GPU. So yeah, while that does it for today, corniness aside with the juice at the beginning, I really do hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And my question to you is, how good do you think Intel's upcoming GPUs are gonna be? Are they going to be just as good as AMD and Nvidia's best, or are they gonna be more middle of the road or really just entry-level GPUs? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And of course, please make sure to subscribe, and as always, have a great day.